Hi there comrades. Um, you may be wondering in which channel you are. Yeah, you still are in Slav Chef. In the Slav Chef. Maybe you're wondering why there are so many capitalistic merchandise figurines beside me. Let's say that if Babushka finds them, I may not be able to shoot that video because, yeah, because of reasons. So, some time ago Babushka taught me how to cook this traditional pastry that you saw in the beginning of the video. This is a traditional Slavic pastry, mainly Bulgarian pastry, which is called Banica. Banica is not this pastry itself that I will be showing you. Banica is a technique of making pastries with field dough. Field dough is again a traditional Balkan dough, which is made in sheets, which you can use to make cool stuff and one of them I'll show you in this video. So, the Banica technique that I was speaking about. Well, it's like you're making layers with field dough and between the layers you put something. We have a ton of different types of banica that you can eat around the Balkans. They were even sweet varieties like baklava. Which the Greeks thinking are it's their own. But it's not their own. It's part Turkish, part Greek, part Bulgarian, but to be honest every country makes it different. In Bulgaria the most traditional banicas are the one that I'll be showing you. There are sweet varieties, there are varieties with apples and pumpkin, there are even varieties with meat or with spinach or with leeks or with sour cabbage or wherever, with, with everything that you can imagine. Today we will be reviewing the most traditional one. Typically we eat it for breakfast but you can eat it whenever you want. We'll be looking at how to prepare the panica and I'll share you some tips and tricks about it. Let's cook! So first we will review the products. We will need 400 grams of filo dough, which is traditional Bulgarian and Balkan dough. In sheets you can use lavash bread or even tortillas instead, but for best results try to find filo dough. You will need 200 grams of Bulgarian white cheese or feta cheese, 5 chicken shell grenades taken directly from the chickens, thanks babushka. You will need 200 grams of curds or quark or cottage cheese, 400 grams of yogurt, 1-2 tablespoons of baking soda and last but not least a little bit of sunflower seed oil or other oil. With that said let's go to the preparation. First you need to break the cheese with a fork Try the cheese to make sure it's not poisoned or something. Try not to eat all of it. You can use your fingers, but you risk having cheese even in your ears after that. After that, throw in five chicken shelled grenades in a huge bowl. Try to do it without the shells if possible. Mix them up for some time until yolks become one with the whites. You mix them really well and after that you add in the yogurt in the eggs. Don't worry, it will just look disgusting but I totally guarantee you that the taste in the end would be awesome. Add in the curd or the quark or the cottage cheese which is totally a Slavic product. All Slavs live in cottages after all so traditionally all cheese is cottage cheese here. Add in 2 tablespoons of baking soda without using spoon at all. Then turn your hand mixer on medium and mix everything until homogeneous. In the end add in the crushed cheese. With that our Slavic empowered mixture is ready and we are on our way to start making the panica. First take the oil and a huge tava. Try to learn that word, we will be using it a lot. Baking sheet just does not sound right in my language, sorry. Plus, it looks nothing like a sheet, to be honest. Put a little bit of oil over the tava with a brush, like an early Slavic Picasso. He's from Macedonia, if you don't happen to know that, of course. Back in the day, when Slavs had no brushes, you douse your tava in oil, just in case, but then Slavs invented brushes to make that process easier and healthier, of course. After all, Slavs invented health as well. After that, you enter secret codes for the Slavic sequence for making a banica. It is as follows. You take two sheets of filo dough, put them in the tava, you oil them with the brush and make them a little bit wavy with your fingers so the banica won't become thick on the edges. You take a ladle, ladle, whatever, 
not a spoon, not a spatula, not a knife, a ladle. You use the ladle to take two times from the mixture and put it all over the sheets. Make sure there is Slavic empowered binds a mixture everywhere. You repeat all of this until you are left with no mixture at all. Make sure you have the last two sheets on the top of the binder to close it and brush them a little bit with oil too. Now enjoy the process of making banitsa a little bit sped up. While we prepare the banitsa, I'll tell you how we eat it. Typically banitsa is a way of preparing something with filo dough. It can have different fillings, it can be meat, it can be leeks, it can be mushrooms and spinach, it can be a ton of things, there are even sweet varieties of bunnies, so with pumpkin and apples. I'll show you all of this in the future, so don't worry. You'll see different varieties of this meal. We typically eat it for breakfast. But yeah, we Slavs are strange people and we typically eat one time a day or two times a day and don't stick to breakfast, lunch and dinner. But yeah, this is a classic breakfast, especially in the ways that I will show you in the end of the video. As I said, you oil the last two sheets and this is how your banitsa looks like before you bake it. It looks nothing spectacular, but you see in the end that in fact it will be spectacular. Before baking, take a knife and imagine how many pieces you want. No, you can't eat it in one piece. Cut the banitsa before baking, it will bake better. I do it in 12 pieces. Bake at 200 degrees Celsius, we don't use Fahrenheit here because it doesn't make any sense. If your oven only works in non-essential units, then go for 390 to Fahrenheit. You'll know when it's ready as it will turn golden brown. It takes approximately 20 to 25 Fahrenheit of time. And you see golden brown looking perfectly and tasty. Bonus slabness. For the bonus round, I'll show you a new friendly easy alternative. You need 170 grams of cottage cheese or curd or cheese, one egg and 20 grams of mozzarella. I prefer grated one with low moisture. You mix everything up and the alternative to filo dough, as I said, is lavash bread, which I'll be using. You can use tortillas instead. We put a little bit of salt, so it's, yeah, it, it should have taste after all. We love, love our taste. Take a brush and put some olive oil over it or other oil. We put some of the mixture over the lavash bread, like one third of it. From this mixture I made three uh, little panica uh, pastries and they're really quick. You see that they even don't need baking at all. After we put the mixture, we brush a little bit more oil and we fold. There are different types of folding. I prefer to do it like a crepe. It's, it's the easiest one, in my opinion. After that, we produce really fast another one and the third one I'll fold off screen. We need a really hot pan. We brush up a little bit more olive oil and put the three panitas on it. We use secret Slavic engineering weapon in the face of a plate with which we will push the panitas over the pan. We turn them up halfway there. They need two minutes aside and we will push again with the Slavic secret weapon. Push again for a little bit and we're ready. This is the noob friendly banichka, banica that you can make. Now, final words. To be honest, this is not the most difficult recipe. We'll prepare more difficult ones in the future. So three out of five. I hope you like the banica. If so, subscribe for more Slavic tasty goods or I'll send Papushka after you. She doesn't know who you are and where you are but she'll find you and Liam needs a new. Meanwhile, some ideas for eating the panica. Yogurt and jam, which is a classic one. Honey, yeah, just honey, it's tasty. And the Bulgarian classic with boza, which is a Slavic sweet fermented drink for which we'll speak about in the future in detail. Slavia next time. <laughs>